So um, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, this is a signal honor for me. I'm not a high-ranking elected official. I'm not a senior official within the, Dem within the Democratic Party. I'm just a private citizen and a Democrat who, who's passionate about energy, climate, and the state of California. So, and I'm passionate enough, I'm so passionate, I quit my job as an investor at the end of 2012 to work on this fight full time. But before I start talking about energy, I want to give a special thanks to my pal John Burton, who has been fighting for justice and talking about basketball for longer than I've been alive. But energy and energy policy are a quintessential California story and a quintessential democratic success story. We are the leaders worldwide in energy policy, not only in the United States, but really around the whole world. California pioneered the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act. Mary Nichols personally pushed the U.S. government to increase the miles, per gallon, the miles per gallon rules last year. She really is a hero. She's done an amazing job for the whole country. But having said that, we also have the lowest per capita energy use of any state in the United States. We use about half as much energy as a typical state. People in Texas don't like to admit this, but we make it work in California. If the federal government passed five bills that have been passed in California since 2002, the United States would achieve carbon sustainability right now. That is the holy grail for energy. AB 32 is the most progressive energy policy for any major government in the world. I mean, that has everything. It's got cap and trade, low carbon fuel standards, RPS. And there is an honor roll of Democrats, and I don't know how many of, I've seen some of them today, I don't know if they're all here, but it includes Daryl Steinberg, Fran Pavley, Nancy Skinner, Fabian Nunez, Joe Simidian, Don Prada. I'm sure I'm forgetting people who are really important, but this was an absolutely amazing achievement by a series of, a, a series of Democrats who I think really deserve our congratulations and applause. I mean, California is talking to the United Kingdom and Canada and Australia about putting together a carbon market. The state of California is doing that. We are leading the world. Last fall, we passed Proposition 39, which is an opportunity for major energy savings in our state's most decrepit schools. And I want to especially thank Senator Kevin DeLeon, who is a very good friend of mine, who co-chaired this proposition, and who has kept on it after it was passed in the beginning of November. For, for all the legislators here, we know God is in the details. And I think the legislator of the state of California is going to make this proposition work for our schools and our kids, as well as our taxpayers and our budget. So the other thing that was really good about Prop 39 was the coalition, because this really was labor and environmentalists and business people working together. When you look at the polls, we won every ethnicity, we won both genders, and we won throughout the state. Every environmental poll shows that the group that cares most about the environment is Latinos. The, the number two group is Asian Americans, the number three group is African Americans. So when people think about environmentalism, they have a, a picture in their head of something that is not true. And in particular, this would never have happened without the active support of people in the labor movement. If Art Pulaski hadn't given us the help he gave us, if Robbie Hunter hadn't given us the help he gave us, we would never have had the success we had. 
This was really a question of a coalition coming together to do the right thing, and that is how it's done in California. Now, I'm a little bit involved in a national discussion about the Keystone Pipeline. So let, let me just describe it very briefly for you. And my big takeaway is this. Our country needs to think like Californians. They want, this pipeline is basically ships very dirty oil from Canada to the Gulf Coast, where we're going to send it on to China. It's a terrible investment for our country from a climate standpoint. But the biggest thing is, it's the wrong way to think. We need to think looking forward about energy. We need to think like Californians. We've got to be innovative. We've got to embrace change. And we need to think big. If we do the right thing, if we act on the climate science, we will have the biggest work project in American history. We will reduce the dirty energy, but mostly we will enable a whole new economy and millions of American jobs. But to do that, we're going to need people who think like the people who passed all those bills in the California legislature. We're going to need visionaries and innovators like my hero, Nancy Pelosi. But we can't lead the world if we make the wrong decision on a major issue at home. If you want to be a leader, you have to walk the walk. You can't just talk about it. That really is what Nancy does every day. She really goes out and fights for the things we care about on an everyday basis, and that's why we love her. But California has been an energy leader in so many ways but we are a laggard in one. We are the only major oil producing state in the United States that doesn't have an oil severance tax. We, pro we produce 8% of the oil in the United States of America. There is no state that produces 1% that doesn't have an oil lifting tax. We're the third biggest oil producing state. I know the legislature is looking at it, They've looked at it before, but this time I really hope we, they get it done. Let me just give you, look, as, as Californian Democrats, California taxpayers, California citizens, let me give you a couple comparisons to Texas. They take a $14 a barrel tax. When you add up all the t ways we tax oil companies, we take the equivalent of $4. The difference to the state of California is a little less than $3 billion a year. We all know what the budget is. $3 billion is still a lot of money. Now, this is especially important now because there has been a shale oil find in the state of California that is the biggest in the United States. It's 15 billion barrels. Now, I have no idea if that can be safely or profitably extracted, but I do know we better put in the tax before we find out. Yes. We had a chance. I don't think anyone in this room was, can be blamed for this one, but we had a chance to put in the oil severance tax in 1865 when the first oil well was drilled. We had a chance in 1899 when the huge Midway Sunset Field was discovered outside, outside Bakersfield. And we had a great chance in the 1920s when the, Calif just the Southern California oil rush really started in earnest. We've missed a couple of chances over the last 150 years, but let's not miss another if we can avoid it. And let me say this. This, this one isn't a question of doing the hard thing. We've done the hard thing. All those energy bills that we passed over the last 10 years, that was taking, doing progressive, hard legislation that pushed our state to do the right thing. This is just a question of our taking a fair share from huge, hugely profitable co oil companies. This is about doing the simple task, the walk and chew gum of government, to showing us that we can do the right thing for the citizens of California in opposition to some very, very big companies. It's, it's smart. 
It's grounded in the real world. And let me say, as a Democrat, we are in a special position right now. We have super majorities in the Senate and the Assembly. This is a chance for us to show what our character is, what our values are, and I don't think it's against our values to ask companies that are exploiting our resources to pay a fair share the way they do in every other state in the United States. And let me make one more point. I know we can find ways to invest in California consistent with our needs. I know we can help out on college costs. I know we can build some infrastructure that's needed. And if, God forbid, we have too much money, I know we could give a middle-class tax break. So I will personally pledge to suggest a good use for the money if no one else in this room can do so. But in the meantime, let's continue to lead. Let's kick some ass, California.